All right. One, two, three. Welcome to Only the Greatest Podcast, where we explore the vital connection between fitness and success in all areas of your life. We are your hosts. My name's Philip. My name's Sean. And our goal is to help you become the greatest version of yourself. We do that here through two different show types. On Fridays, we'll come to you with a full length episode that may or may not include a guest. And on Tuesdays, we're going to come to you with a little nugget of knowledge that you can immediately implement into your health and fitness journey. If you happen to find any value in this show, all we ask is that you leave a quick review and mention specifically what helped you out. If you're listening on YouTube, all we ask is if you like, comment, subscribe, and in that comment, leave the review. Our one and only sponsor here is ourself, OTG Fitness. OTG Fitness is a private personal training gym on the south side of Houston in Webster, Texas. And you can find out more information about OTG Fitness by visiting otgfitness.com or searching OTG Fitness on any social media platform. <laughs> Ooh, let's go. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. All right. I, I kind of I kind of forgot a little bit, but then I kind of uh-huh. tried to uh, pick it up. But man, I, that felt pretty good. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. it's getting strong. Damn good. It's getting strong. Yeah, yeah. Good. I feel good about it. Well, Sean, today's Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Got a little nugget of knowledge. Yes, sir. What are we talking about? We're gonna be talking about losing weight fast. Yes. Everyone wants to lose weight fast. You know, they're all talk, talking about. You know, you put your goals together, and the first thing that people think about is how quickly they want to lose weight, Mm -hmm. you know? And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. So uh, a big thing that I want to make sure that we come across with is there's nothing wrong with wanting your goals fast. You know, we've both been through some, some weight loss, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, quick and dirty 30 to 60 seconds, your weight loss journey. How long did it take and how much? Um, I started at, so I started at about like 220, 225 ish. Okay. Um, I didn't really have any set journey or goal as far, I mean, set journey or diet as far as like what I wanted to do to lose weight, but I felt like I had to lose weight. Mm-hmm. I was getting a little bit chubby and I was one of those guys that like no one really told me I was chubby. And then a friend of mine, uh, we we're just capping on each other, joking. And he said that I look like I had a beer gut. And I'm like, man, no, I don't. And I look down, I'm wearing this shirt that was like a size too small. And I'm like, yeah, it's looking, <laughs> looking a little chubby. So I got to do something. So I didn't really know what to do. And um, I had a friend of mine that lost a lot of weight using the keto diet. So I gave it a try. And man, I lost, um, I I did a month of the keto. um, And I think I lost probably like 10 or 15 in that wow. in that month or something mm-hmm. like that. It was a pretty significant drop. And um, what I really liked is it kind of helped me. Um, I'm not suggesting the keto diet. Right. I mean, if, if it I helped only you get started, yeah. Only time I suggest it is when people have like really bad eating habit habits. And I'm like, Hey man, I mean, you can still eat burgers. You can still yeah. eat cheeseburgers mm-hmm. kind of. So it's just like, that's the only time I ever suggested, but man, I, I lost a good amount from that. And um, I tried it again later on and I lost a one, another not as much as the first time but I lost a little bit more and now I sit at comfortably about like 195 to 200 just okay and you like that that weight on yourself yeah, yeah yeah I would like to lose a little bit more I would like to be closer to the one um like the 189 okay. like earlier 190 so mm-hmm. I would like to shave off another like 10 or so pounds but yeah cool. right now I'm pretty happy with I, yeah. where I'm at I think and speaking of losing weight fast I think 10 pounds in a month for someone that weighs 220 is fast, but reasonable, you know, and the rule that I like to follow when it comes to speed of weight loss is the 1% rule, which is losing 1% of your body weight Mm -hmm. per week at a maximum. So that's going to be your maximum. So you lost 10 pounds in a month. Let's call a month, four weeks, Mm -hmm. right? Two, uh, 1% of 200 would be two pounds, So two pounds a week would be eight pounds in a month, Mm -hmm. right? And Mm -hmm. if you're losing weight any faster than that, like if you lost 15 in a month, I would call that a little too fast. I would say 10 is not bad. Eight is really kind of the more ideal number because like I said, that's 1% of your body weight per week. Okay. If you're doing anything more than that, it's likely, and you were, right? You were doing keto. Mm -hmm. It's likely not sustainable in the long run. Yeah, correct. Yeah. I, I, I didn't at the time, there wasn't a lot of like uh, keto information out there. This was a couple of years ago. And um, yeah, that was kind of the, that was one of the few things I knew. It was um, that there, 
that you didn't want to do it forever. Mm -hmm. It was kind of like a one to two month. And there was someone that I knew they'd been doing it for like six or something. And I'm like, man, I don't know. I mean, I I was digging the diet. Luckily I was doing a lot of like bunless cheeseburgers and stuff like that. But um, I think it's like what a cholesterol thing. I don't, I don't really know um, the the dangers of it or anything. It could but. be. There's a subset of the population that if you eat really high saturated fat diets, your cholesterol will could raise. Okay. But then there's other people where it won't. Okay. Right. So it is it is fairly dangerous to just go try in these diets without getting your blood work. So we're not doctors here, right? We're not claiming to be. Yeah, not really. We're just highly encouraging people that if you're going to take on a diet like that, that you should get, get uh, consider getting your blood work done to check your numbers as you're losing weight to make sure you're doing it in a healthy way. Yeah. And um, ideally, the 1% rule that we follow is your maximum amount of weight loss um, per week. Because if, like, once again, if you're losing weight faster than that, you're probably doing something like keto or like some crazy fasting protocol or starving yourself. Mm-hmm. That's not going to be sustainable in the lifetime. And we are fans of doing something that you can do for a long time. Okay. Now, if you need a little kickstart, like what helped you out, I think that's great. Um, point number two that I really want to make here is, and I already said it leading off with, <clears throat> is that if you want to lose weight quickly, you should get to your goal quickly. Like if, if you, that means you're motivated, right? But you need to be motivated and in, in do something that is sustainable and you're not going to hurt your health, hurt your psychology. Um, you know, the mental side is something that I think a lot of people overlook in the weight loss journey. Yeah. It's something that really needs to be taken into account. And if we real quick, kind of on my story, I lost um, about 85 pounds over about an eight month period. Yeah. Um, so pretty sustainable weight loss over eight months leading to, you so know, I'll give you a little that. pause on that. Ooh, one, huh? Thanks. That's been a long time ago. <laughs> a long time but that's ago. A, that's a lot yeah. of weight though, man. That's, yeah. that's huge. Mm-hmm. I, I think that uh, at any time people should be congratulated for, uh, for weight loss just cause I mean, 10 to 85 pounds, mm-hmm. man, that's, that's tough. I lost yeah, oh yeah, anywhere. I mean, losing weight in general is difficult. Yeah. Changing your eating habits is one of the hardest thing you'll ever do. Yeah. And what I, it's, I say this kind of jokingly, but you know, in addiction, I don't like to use the word overuse the word addicted, but I just, for this uh, analogy that I'm going to make, we use the word addicted, but if you're addicted to drugs, it's hard to get drugs, right? You have to, you know, illegally buy them. It can be difficult, right? Hide it. If you're addicted oh, to oh, food. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was like, wait, uh, I, yeah, <laughs> what are you getting at? Yeah. yeah. If you're addicted yeah. to food, like Whataburger, Jack in the Box, McDonald's is always right around the corner. And they're 24 hours. 24 hours, super cheap, very low barrier of entry. Yes. Addicted to drugs, high barrier of entry. Mm-hmm. It's illegal. Yes. Addicted to food, low barrier of entry. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. You know, yeah. it's, and you have to eat. This is kind of like, imagine telling an alcoholic that, you know, they're addicted to alcohol, right? Imagine telling that alcoholic, yeah, you can have a drink, but only one. Yeah. That's what it's like overcoming a food addiction. Cause yeah. you have to eat. Yeah. You don't have to drink alcohol. Very you true. can literally go the rest of your life without it. My analogy for that, um, is when it comes to like the car thing is almost, uh, this might be pivoting just a little bit, but it's almost like the car analogy. I need a brand new car because I need to get to work. Mm-hmm. I need to drive. I need a car. And we do, we do need yep. a car in this area, but it's like you could temper your expectations a little bit and get something a little bit more in your budget. Or you can just say, I'm going straight to Lexus and I'm getting the, the GS, whatever the hell, you yeah. know, and just, and, and it's like, oh yeah, whatever, you know? So that's kind of like yeah. an analogy that I like to use mm-hmm. in, in my head when it yeah, comes to yeah, that. I, I, like I think re- relating um, fitness things to financial are very similar mm-hmm. often. And I was actually just having a conversation with someone the other day, something that happens in the finance world and also that happens when it comes to food is the term or the statement, I deserve it. Yes. Oh, yes. That one will get oh, you. Oh man. Yeah. 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 If you deserve, like, that's why people buy a car out of their budget. Oh, I deserve it. Yeah. I've been working so hard. Well, if you, yeah, if you deserved it, then you could actually afford it without having to get this crazy amount finance or debt or make, or have payments that are limiting your budget too much. Exactly. You know, and then also, but it happens also in food where you're like, oh, I deserve it. I deserve to stop. I've been going to the gym for a week. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You know, I, uh, and so you stop on the way home, but the actual thing that's going, you've convinced yourself that you deserve it. But you, you really haven't earned it quite yet. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, and so you have to be very careful. A couple drinks. I deserve it. I deserve to have a night out and have a couple beers. Yeah. You know, well, have you achieved anything yet? Yeah. You know? And and I think that that like uh, delayed gratification is huge Bingo. when it comes to when it comes to like weight loss and losing weight fast. It's mm-hmm. like, man, just kind of imagine yourself as that thinner, slimmer, more or, or in better shape person. You know, depending on what your goals are, yeah. imagine you as that person three, four months down the road or a month down the road, whatever. Mm-hmm. Even if, you know, sometimes it takes that. It's like, man, if I wait, if I if I can imagine myself a month from now then it's like, cool, we'll see where we're at then. And then you just keep going and going and yeah. month, month, year, days, and, and you just keep pushing on. I, I don't know. Yeah, that's no, cool. I think that's that's perfect. And, and on that note, the, the, the next thing I kind of wanted to mention is making sure that even though, yeah, you want to set a goal to get to your goals as quickly as possible, as long as it's healthy, right? Following that 1% rule. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you need to be thinking about what you do after that. Let's say you mm. set a goal of losing 20 pounds in six months, it sounds pretty reasonable, right? Well, what are you going to do after that? Like, what's the plan? You don't need an exact plan, but you need to at least be aware that something's going to happen. Some type of decision that needs to be made. Because you're going to be, a, the, the other thing that you don't realize, you're going to be a different person. Yeah. Right? So yeah. you need to be aware that, man, my decision making may be swayed. So you, you might not want to put a concrete thing in place that in six months, I'm going to change my goal to X, Y, Z, but just know that something's going to have to happen right at, at this time in the future, after I get to this first goal, well, what's next? Yeah. Right. And I don't want to, I don't want to turn anybody off and think them that you can't celebrate or anything like that, but just, this is a lifelong journey. And what I was getting at is you need to be thinking about yourself in five years, 10 years, 20 years, mm-hmm. where do you want to be? Right. Do you still want to be doing keto in 10 years? If so, awesome. Yeah. Do it. Great. But if you don't, well, then maybe you should reconsider what you're doing from day one. Exactly. And also, maybe you need to do it to get yourself kickstarted. I don't know. Yeah. Everyone's a little bit different. Yeah. I'll I'll say I had some pretty bad eating habits before I uh, went on the keto for the first time. And I think that uh, using it to kickstart, uh, you know, a better diet, I was able to take, um, the biggest thing I learned from keto is just portion control mm-hmm. and how important that is. Cause I was like, man, there's so many times that my eyes were bigger than my stomach and I'm like, oh man, I need this like meat lovers, large pizza from mm-hmm. Domino's and I'll eat the whole thing. And then it's like, sometimes you get like four or five pieces in and you're like, you know, um, forcing the the other two in or something. And it's just like, you don't need to have all that. What's funny about that is there's actually nothing in keto that talks about portion control. What, what was it about it? Was it just the fact that you were on something, some type of protocol? Yeah, I think, well, with keto, I was making a lot more of my meals too. So I wasn't like going out. It was rare that I would go out to like get a burger from somewhere, but I mean, I couldn't get fries. I really Mm -hmm. couldn't get soda. I didn't drink like zero calorie sodas Mm -hmm. at the time. So it's like, there was really no point in me going to Whataburger and stuff like that. Now, when I did, I would just get a uh, bunless cheeseburger or yeah. whatever. So it was like no point in me really going. So I'd make my own meals and I wouldn't make like these huge meals for myself. Anytime I cook for myself, I feel like I am a lot more fulfilled and with a lot less. And yeah. it's probably what less filler or something like that, but whatever You're getting it is, less calories. Yeah. So it's look, like, man. looking back now, do you think it was keto or do you think it's that you were making your own meals and not eating out as much? It could have been. It, yeah, it I, think been. It, I think it was. Yeah, it could yeah. have been that. And then keto is just the 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 name, the That's diet right. for it. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like it. But yeah, I, I liked I liked the fact that, you know, I was able to still eat cheeseburgers yeah. and ba- like bacon cheeseburgers at home with no bun. I was like, oh, yeah, this is great. And yeah. So, yeah, uh, I learned I learned this from uh, Lane Norton. Do you, do you keep up with Lane Norton? He's mm-hmm. a really great guy. You should you should look him up. Um, Lane Norton says that if you want to lose weight or lose body fat, change body composition. Uh, I forget the exact percentage is probably like a study or something. I I don't know the exact, but let's, let's just say 90 plus percent of people that are successful in the long term in those five, 10, 20 year plans that we're talking about, Mm -hmm. you have to practice some sort of restriction of some kind because our world is so full of food and bad food, some form of restriction must be practiced. So okay. that restriction, there's multiple options here. You can go time restricted, intermittent fasting, right? You can go carb restricted, keto, right? You can go calorie restricted, count your calories and 
Yeah. You can go macros. Like you can track, you have to do something that is restrictive. Okay. If you're going to be successful in this, it just is what it is, but you need to pick the form that is least restrictive to you. Yeah. And that, when I that, heard, that's why I chose keto. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. when I heard that, I was like, it's so true. And I've always yeah. thought that. And then it just kind of brought it all together, you know, so restriction of some kind, because if you didn't have restriction, you'd just keep going in the direction you're going. You'd probably be 240 now instead of 220. That'd be gross. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, because yeah, yeah, that, yeah. yeah, that would be, like I said, I was just the guy that no one ever told me I was like chunky, you mm -hmm. know, and like, it's just, and I, and, and at 220 on, on me or 225, wherever I was, it didn't look terrible, but to me, I felt like I kind of felt bad. Mm -hmm. And I think I, I thought it just looked bad. I was like, oh. Yeah. What are you doing, man? What's going man, on? At that, at that time, you had no restriction. No restriction. You had all. to implement some sort of restriction mm -hmm. to start to progress. Yes. But you implemented a form of restriction that felt the least restrictive to you. Yeah. Right. So pick your battles. If you're listening to this, pick your battles. But you have to do something that, that is restrictive. And remember that if you're losing more than 1% of your body weight on a weekly basis, it's likely, not for sure, but likely that you're doing something that is going to be unsustainable in the long term. Not telling you to not do that, mm -hmm. but just know that you may need to reassess your plan at some point. Did you do uh, any type of, or are you on any type of diet or have you ever tried any type of diet? Uh, I tried it all, dude. I did yeah. keto for a year, actually. Damn. Full year. Okay. Zero mess ups. One year. How was that? It actually worked really well for me. Yeah. Um... I had great results. I didn't lose any strength. I lost uh, a little bit of weight, not much, felt great. Um, decided against it though, after about a, right out a year, just because, man, I, I couldn't see myself living the rest of my life on a diet where I couldn't eat a banana. True. You know, like you tell <laughs> yeah. me I can't eat a banana. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. I, I love you fruits. Know? I me too. I eat a ton fruit of fruit now. So it's just yeah. like, man, that but would yeah, kind of Yeah. And I, I did fasting. Uh, I did fasting for a lot of intermittent fasting. I did a lot of 24 hour plus fasts. Okay. Um, I've tracked my macronutrients down to the tiniest, you know, thing that you could ever imagine. Yeah. Um, now I at a point now where I'm like, I'm tracking again now. Mm -hmm. um, I don't always recommend it for everyone, but I think it's good to do every once in a while. I am tracking now just because we're working on a nutrition program at the gym. Okay. And Justin and I are working on it together and I am tracking my food pretty diligently again. But um, so that's my form of restriction that I'm using now mm -hmm. is a form of tracking. But what I found to be successful is just narrow your food choices that seems to be good, but that's a form of restriction. Yeah. Right. Definitely. I'm, I narrow my food choices. Here's the proteins I like. Here's the carbs I like. Fruits, vegetables. Here's mm -hmm. the the healthy fats that I like, and I kind of stick to those foods. Okay. That's my form of restriction now. I actually started tracking recently too, and I don't have a um like a set amount or but I mean sometimes I go over. Uh, a lot of times I'm under, but my like the app has me set for like twenty two hundred calories I think daily intake. Mm. Uh, but um. Yeah, it's been cool. I like it. It it makes me a little bit more aware of just like how much uh calories and how much is in certain, certain foods. Yeah. Cause like anytime it's like I miss uh my meal prep and I'm like, okay, well, let me go to Chipotle or do whatever. It, dude, it's so much. You see the difference, right? It's so much. It's crazy. I'm like, it's it's this is the healthier option. Yeah. And it's just like through the I mean, I blow past my allowance every time I add any fast yeah. food. It's a aw awareness definitely is number one. And yeah. if you're listening to this, the number one thing that you can do to start moving in the right direction if you're struggling right now is to track your food. Whether you use an app on your phone like Sean and myself, or whether you just want to use a journal. Uh, write yeah. it down notes yeah. on your notes phone, on your phone yeah. notes on your phone works. I like the good old handwritten journal situation. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a little bit of an eye opener. If you don't know how to calculate the calories or macros, it's really not even that important. Most people know the difference between right and wrong. Yeah. Everybody knows more salad, less pizza. It's just finding ways to get there. Yeah. Right. So if you write your food down, you'll start to be more aware. Uh, if you want to work with a professional that can help you break down the calories and macronutrients, you can do that. Not mm -hmm. necessary, um, but pick your battles, you know, choose some form of restriction. That would be a form of restriction. You have to write it down. Yeah. Right. So if you do that for a while, I guarantee you, you will get some type of results. Even if your body 
weight doesn't change, I promise you will learn so much about yourself and your eating habits. Um, another just last thing on the journal, it can be really helpful. We should do a full episode on this. Um, also write down how you feel and start Mm. to find the correlation between what you eat and how you feel. So remember you only get out of your body, what you put in it. And if we can make the correlation between what you put in your body and the energy that it gives you out, Mm -hmm. we can start to eliminate the foods that make you feel bad, double down on the foods that make you feel good. You will automatically get results. And you don't even, and we're not even talking about calories right now. No. What foods make right. you feel good? That's right. Oh, me? Yeah, you. Yeah, me. Uh, I stick with um, meat. Meat is great for me for whatever reason. Have no issues with that. Fruits. Um, it's really more about finding the foods that don't make you feel good. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah. the foods that don't, unfortunately, I don't eat very many vegetables. Vegetables don't really do it for me. Almost all give me some type of like gas bloating situation going on with a lot of vegetables. Okay. Spicy things make me feel bad. It makes my stomach hurt. I have a pretty sensitive um, stomach. stomach. Yeah. Spicy, okay. greasy, um, garlic. I avoid garlic at all costs. Damn, it messes I, I my stomach garlic. up. I can't do it. <laughs> messes me up. Yeah. It messes Damn. me up. So yeah. my, my diet's pretty simple. Um, meat, fruit, a little bit of bread. I might eat sandwiches, you know, mm-hmm. stay away from dairy for the most part. Okay. Um, and so I, I know what works for me and I know what doesn't. Okay. Right. And I think it's important that all people find that because everyone's a little bit different. You can do all the genetic tests you want. You can do all the blood work you want. Um, as far as allergies and allergy tests and all this stuff, Mm -hmm. um, they have the ones that are blood. They have the skin based ones. Outcome based approach is what we call it. Use an outcome based approach. Try it. Did it work? Yes. Keep doing it. No, stop doing it. There you go. It's pretty simple, you know? So, um, anything else to add in here, Sean, as far as, you know, any little things from your weight loss? That's really it, man. Just, um, yeah, that's it pretty much. That's all I got. Okay. Yeah, me too. So don't forget, um, it's okay to want to lose weight fast, but just remember if you're losing more than 1% of your body weight in any given week, it's likely you're doing something that's not sustainable in the long term. It's totally okay to want to reach your goals quickly, Mm -hmm. but don't forget the five, 10 and 20 year goals in the long run and some form of restriction is necessary, but pick the form that feels the least restrictive to you. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Thanks Lane Norton for that one. That was really great. Really great little, um, snippet there. Yeah. And hang out with people that'll like bust your balls a little bit. I think, <laughs> yeah, okay, I, think you, yeah. I think you need some people to really tell you about yourself sometimes. Sure. It's just like, Hey man, it, whether it's your girlfriend, your coworker, your mom, dad, whoever, mm-hmm. someone needs to be like, damn, man, you get a little chubby. Yeah, somebody's <laughs> or, or damn, yeah. man, you get a little skinny. And sometimes, Hey, sometimes they might not be right, but they'll kind of get you to take a second look, be like, Oh, you know what? You see yourself every day. You get so comfortable. You know, you go from a 32 to a 30, like talking like pant size. And then like next year you buy a 34 and you're like, ah, no big deal. And then next year you're like 35, 36. What's going on? You're like, but even, but it's so slow. You don't, you don't don't think much of it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think that that's something a friend told me too. He was like, man, he's like, um, I, I try not to go and buy bigger pants. He's like, I try to fit in the, the ones I have. So yeah. if I'm wearing like a 33, I try to just stay in the 33 and mm-hmm. just chill there. You know, I don't want to be the guy that's like just pushing up more and more or you get the like stretchy pants. Oh, <laughs> oh game it's over. over, man. It's yeah, over. <laughs> it is. All right, guys. Well, that's what we got for today. Um, if you're listening on YouTube, make sure you like, subscribe. If you're listening anywhere else, a review would always be nice. We'd appreciate that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And um, yeah. I think that's it. Anything else to add? That's it. Make sure you share with everybody you know. Yep. We're out. I didn't mean to come in so aggressively on that. (laughs) (laughs) That's all right. That's all right. That's all good. Sounded good. Cool.